Alright, sorry this is late. Um, uh, so I told you guys we would uh, look today at some science and mathematics aspects. Um, and what we're really doing is we're, we're really going to look at Da Vinci. Um, there are a few more people uh, during this time that um, that really did leave uh, their mark on uh, humanity, I guess, if you really want to go with humanity in itself. Um, but Da Vinci is the guy that we we look at um, as being that uh, uh, that number one in, in this area, and uh, you can really see it with just these pictures that are on here. Um, the gyrocopter, uh, his anatomy. I mean, look how uh, intricate. Even you know, I know that's a really small picture, but look how intricate and and everything that he put into this the the shoulder blades the spinal cord um and and he didn't scan these people um he didn't have the technology we have today um to x-ray somebody uh, or to mri someone or you know whatever whatever you can think of he drew all of this all of this by hand um it, it's pretty amazing to uh to, to think that um this guy could could draw uh, anatomy um like this um and 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 do it with actual human beings that he he was dissecting or watching being dissected um this is a uh, obviously a self-portrait of him that uh he 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 did in a mirror just like uh michelangelo did the one that i showed you guys um Let's dive into uh, Da Vinci a little bit more. All right, so what happens is is this hum humanist theory. Remember, um, the humanist belief of um, humans have a place in this world um, and that things can uh, coincide with each other, work with each other. Um, and it really starts getting a hold of, of people that, that are within the realm of, of the Renaissance. Um, and know what is going on. And people begin to question these old ideas. They they start carefully looking at the world around them. Instead of just relying on old books and theories, scientists actually start to begin to perform experiments. Um, instead of, hey, uh, Aristotle said this is how something works. Um, instead of taking it for the truth and, and nothing but the truth, uh, people, people started to experiment with what Aristotle was looking at. Um, how do you think we get from, you know, the heliocentric model um, to uh, also, you know, this, this aspect that um, the earth was not the, the center of the, uh, the, the world anymore? Um, if, if we would have just taken early astronomy and believed everything that was, was put out there, um, who knows how long it would have taken before we would have seen that um, <clears throat> that we were not the center of the universe, that the, the sun is the center of our aspect of the universe. Um, so really, these are these are groundbreaking things and, and, and theories that are coming out of uh, the time frame that, you know, you really wouldn't think that would be coming out of the 13 to 1600s um, early time frame. Um, and they were using math and, and logic and, and ways to approach research um, of science. And, and really the, the, one of the biggest people of this, and I know I've said this a bunch of times, he's my favorite, but um, he, he was a very creative thinker. Da Vinci was. Um, he was a, like a jack of all trades. He was, he was like that, uh, that, that dad, that, can fix a car, uh, install a sink, uh, paint a room, um, build a you know a, a garage, like he, all of this stuff, and but but still be wearing a suit, you know that that that, and go to work and do something totally different than working with his hands. Um, that's what Da Vinci was. Uh, he was an engineer. He invented things. He studied under artists in Florence and and did his early work there. Um, uh, so he 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 was a part of the Medi Medici uh, family also of of thinkers. We'll go with it that way, where um, he he was he was commissioned by them and and learned underneath um, P 
people that the Medici's and um, really uh, pushed to, uh, to to make it work um, and to and and to further the understanding of, of human science. Um, da Vinci, uh, I, I, I always tell this to my seventh graders. Um, for those of you that have ever watched Futurama uh, or know what Futurama is, uh, that's the bending robot and all that. I, I, I used to watch that all the time. Um, they, they, they make one where uh, Da Vinci, they go back in time and, and they go back to time when Da Vinci is alive and, and they're watching everything that Da Vinci's doing and they're in his workshop and everything and they're in, in total, total awe of what he does. Um, Fry and, and Bender and I think Lila was there. Um, and he, uh, he, he, they then take uh, Da Vinci to his home world. They, they realize that he is not a human, he is an alien. Um, they take him to his home world and he is the dumbest person in, um, on his home world. Um, and I always, excuse me, <clears throat> I always thought it was funny that, you know, you, you have probably one of the brightest minds, um, in human history, uh, just to think of some of the things that he thought of and to not know of any, any type of, uh, um, experimental logic for flight or anything like that, or, um, tanks and, you know, and, and those, those types of aspects. Uh, he was way ahead of his time to be to be uh on a futurama and go back to his his world and be the dumbest um person in his world he was the brunt of all the jokes and everything and he, he was totally uh just killed because of the fact that he was the dumbest person and in the brunt of all the jokes and that's why he came to to earth um but uh it, it was probably one of my favorite episodes because it was it, it, it was one of my favorite people in history um so uh, this is actually really interesting. It's a TED Ed. Um, I can't remember how long it is. Uh, it's five minutes. So uh, before I start it, I'll do this. I'll do this. You found uh, there. There's a riddle, and, and Da Vinci used to use riddles. And yes, again, that's Da Vinci being man. I, I, again, he is naked. Um, but uh, da, da Vinci used riddles to uh, hide a lot of his stuff. Um, so that people would not know uh, where it was and, and what it, uh, how to get to it. He, he was a very secretive type of person, according to, uh, to history. So this is, this is Ted Ed using um, the, uh, the, the Ventruvian man uh, and, and this riddle that uh, Da Vinci puts in here. Um, hopefully Ted Ed doesn't get me for copyright infringement, but I will show you this. Found Leonardo da Vinci's secret vault secured by a series of combination locks. Fortunately, your treasure map has three codes, 1210-3211000, and, hmm, the last one appears to be missing. Looks like you're going to have to figure it out on your own. There's something those first two numbers have in common. They're what's called autobiographical numbers. This is a special type of number whose structure describes itself. Each of an autobiographical number's digits indicates how many times the digit corresponding to that position occurs within the number. The first digit indicates the quantity of zeros. The second digit indicates the number of ones. The third digit, the number of twos, and so on until the end. The last lock takes a 10-digit number, and it just so happens that there's exactly one 10-digit autobiographical number. What is it? So, um, hold on, we'll go back. Um, all right. So for those of you that are really into, uh, uh, puzzles or math puzzles or something like that, um, this is the, the rules or what we get into this. So the number must have 10 digits. Um, the digit in the first position indicates how many times a zero occurs. So if you put six in the first position, you have to have six zeros within the 10 digits. Um, for every uh, subsequent position, a digit at position N indicates how many times digit N occurs. So, and there's only one correct answer. Um, so these are the, the rules to figure this out. I took my, my other seventh grade classes, we, we figured this out. Um, and it took an entire class period each time to figure it out, but it was fun to do it. 
So here we go. Blindly trying different combinations would take forever. So let's analyze the autobiographical numbers we already have to see what kinds of patterns we can find. By adding all the digits in 1, 2, 1, 0 together, we get 4, the total number of digits. This makes sense, since each individual digit tells us the number of times a specific digit occurs within the total. So the digits in our 10-digit autobiographical number must add up to 10. This tells us another important... So did you get that? So the digits must add up to 10. Um, just by looking at the uh, two other uh, aspects of the secret code. So you have 10 digits. Uh, you have to add them up to uh, 10, starting with zero. Important thing. The number can't have too many large digits. For example, if it included a 6 and a 7, then some digit would have to appear 6 times, and another digit 7 times, making more than 10 digits we can conclude that there can be no more than one digit greater than five in the entire sequence. So out of the four digits six, seven, eight, and nine, only one, if any, will make the cut. And there will be zeros in the positions corresponding to the numbers that aren't used. So now we know that our number must contain at least three zeros, which also means that the leading digit must be three or greater. Now, while this first digit counts the number of zeros, every digit after it counts how many times a particular non-zero digit occurs. If we add together all the digits besides the first one, and remember, zeros don't increase the sum, we get a count of how many non-zero digits appear in the sequence, including that leading digit. For example, if we try this with the first code, we get 2 plus 1 equals 3 digits. Now, if we subtract 1, we have a count of how many non-zero digits there are after the first digit, 2 in our example. Why go through all that? Well, we now know something important. The total quantity of non-zero digits that occur after the first digit is equal to the sum of these digits, minus 1. And how can you get a distribution where the sum is exactly 1 greater than the number of non-zero positive integers being added together. The only way is for one of the add-ends to be a 2, and the rest 1s. How many 1s? Turns out there can only be 2. Any more would require additional digits, like 3 or 4, to count them. So now we have the leading digit of 3 or greater counting the zeros, a 2 counting the 1s, and two 1s, one to count the 2s, and another to count the leading digit. And speaking of that, it's time to find out what the leading digit is. Since we know that the 2 and the double 1s have a sum of 4, we can subtract that from 10 to get 6. Now, it's just a matter of putting them all in place. 6 zeros, 2 1s, 1 2, 0 3s, 0 4s, 0 5s, 1 6, 0 7s, 0 8s, and 0 9s. The safe swings open. And inside you find Da Vinci's long-lost autobiography. For today's bonus riddle, here's what we'd like you to do. Find all of the autobiographical numbers. If you're not sure where to start, our partners at Brilliant.org have created an exploration to help you. Brilliant can show you how to solve new and unfamiliar problems by using critical reasoning skills. They provide frameworks to think about problems and understand how concepts relate to each other. If you're interested in improving your critical reasoning skills, the first 833 of you who visit brilliant.org slash TED-Ed will get 20% off the annual... Right. Um, definitely uh, an interesting thing. If we were in class, I actually would have uh, totally paused that, gave you the, the uh, instructions back here, and had you guys work in groups to see if you could figure out um, what, uh, what it was. But you could see, though, Da Vinci... Um, wasn't just an artist. He didn't just paint the Mona Lisa. Um, he didn't just sculpt. There were so many different things that Da Vinci did um, that made him the one of the, the the brightest minds, at least during the Renaissance, if not uh, in human history. Um, 
and uh, um, it's just I, I don't know. It's pretty cool to see you know that type of stuff um, where uh, you, he's using something like that to uh, figure out um, and, to, and to lock something and using math and, and your deductive reasonings and those aspects to find something. So let's look at Da Vinci just a little bit. All right. Um, so, so Da Vinci, another self-portrait. Um, great beard. Uh, so we'll go back to that. But uh, Da Vinci himself, um, Mona Lisa painting here. Okay. Very heavily guarded by uh, people um, and uh, behind glass. But uh, Da Vinci himself, all right, he trained in Florence, like I said, under a master sculptor and a painter. All his life, he studied <coughs> a bunch of different subjects, painting, sculpture, music, math, anatomy, botany, working with plants, architecture and engineering. Uh, he worked as an artist, an engineer, and architect for kings, popes, and, and really wealthy commoners, those uh, Medici family aspect there. He had a special love, though, for animals. And what he used to do was he would um, buy caged animals at the market and he'd set them free. Um, he was a vegetarian, which was uh, very quite unusual at, uh, at that time. Um, his books... Uh, his, Leonardo's notebook show him to be one of the greatest creative minds of all time. Like a guy named Albrecht Durer, he closely studied uh, proportions. Um, so you're looking at like how uh, uh, how big like someone's hand is compared to um, their other hand, or like feet, and you know all these types of things with proportions. Um, he made precise drawings of people and animals and plants. Sketched out ideas about geometry and mechanics and the science of motion and force. He designed weapons, buildings, and a variety of machines, and many of the inventions he imagined, such as a helicopter and submarine, were centuries ahead of their time. Um, the I think the first helicopter was like in um, 1920, 25? Um, I can't remember. First helicopter. 1939 was the first first helicopter made, um, and he's designing a helicopter uh, hundreds of years before they um, they even even thought about it. Now again, remember um, he, he laws of motion and, and and lift and and all of these types of things he wasn't uh, he wasn't up on um, because uh, he. He just didn't, I mean, it wasn't part of their life. He would watch birds and those types of things to see how they, um, how they moved and, and glided and stuff like that and tried to uh, put that within um, humans and how they actually could uh, one day fly. So that is Da Vinci. Um, on Monday, I will, um, I'll go over this uh, video um, so you can see a little bit of what he uh, what he's done, and we'll look at uh, Copernicus, who um, some of you might have heard of, some of you might not have, uh, a astronomer. All right, um, make sure you're working on your uh, uh, your slideshow. Final thing we have: if you have things that are past due, make sure you get on those. Also, if you are coming to a point where you cannot get everything done, but you have shown me that you are working on stuff please email me um and and we'll get together and we will talk about what you're missing so i can hopefully get you to understand what you are missing and how it fits into uh history and, and why you really need to know it why it's important um hopefully everybody has a a, a good weekend and um i will um talk to you guys on Monday about Copernicus and finish up Da Vinci.